This is an Xbox One controller, and I've been using it almost every day for nearly a decade now. It's been serving me very well so far, and I honestly can't complain and didn't really have any intentions of replacing it. But I reached out to Nacon, and they actually agreed to send me review samples for two new releases, the Revolution X, which released last year but now has a new color scheme, and the Color Light. The thing about these two controllers is that this one is targeted at pro gamers, whereas this one is targeted at, well, everyday regular gamers. The question is, do you really need to pick between the two? Which one is actually superior? And the answer might surprise you. Let's start off with the underdog, because everybody loves a good underdog story. And that's going to be the color light. The color light is very reminiscent of the 90s era of transparent designs. It seems like almost everyone was doing it. Nintendo was doing it, Apple was doing it, so many companies were doing it with their electronics. And it is such a cool trend that I'm glad hasn't completely faded away over the years. I actually used to own a transparent controller for my Wii U, the PDP Afterglow, which didn't last very long, unfortunately, but I did enjoy the controller, especially, of course, the ability for it to light up. And the color light is now here to return that functionality because who doesn't love RGB, right? Looking past the lights for a second, how does the controller itself feel? Well, surprisingly, really, really good. The face buttons are nice and clicky, although they don't have the same real tactile feel as the Xbox One or Xbox Series controllers. It feels a little bit mushy and kind of more cheap feeling. The analog sticks, however, are where the action's at. They, of course, are what you're going to be using the most, and they feel really good, really smooth. They have a nice enough resistance that snaps them back to the center. Can't complain about those at all. The D-pad, however, eh, I don't like it at all. It's very mushy, does not feel great, does not feel anywhere as nice as the original Xbox One controller that I have, but yet somehow this is an eight-way D-pad. Yeah, it comes out of the box in eight-way mode, and that can be adjusted, but I'll talk more about that later. The shoulder buttons then, they don't feel the best. They're probably the most disappointing thing about it. You can even barely hear it when you click. They're fine, they get the job done. I just don't like them, not very great. But the triggers, the triggers are wider than what's on the Xbox One controller. And even though it is more comfortable because your fingers have more area to just rest on, they don't have the same amount of travel. They feel far shallower than the original Xbox controller, or Xbox One rather. So if I want to make more minute adjustments, like for example in a racing game, which is 99% of what I play if it's not a simulator, I like to have that nice minute adjustment for like, you know, pressing just a little bit of gas or a little bit of brake. And I don't get the same amount of travel as I can on a regular Xbox controller. That said though, the main draw of this controller is again that transparent shell with those LEDs and there are six LEDs in this controller, all of which can display a single color independently from one another or you can set it up to have an array of showing all the same colors and you can pick between about three light cycles to show off the colors. The thing is all the customization is done through a companion app which can be downloaded for free from the Microsoft Store on PC or the Xbox Store on an Xbox console. And in there, not only can you adjust the lights, like for example, setting up the colors, setting up the light cycle, as well as setting up the intensity of the lights, but you can also go ahead and do button mapping with all the different face buttons, and you can change the response curves of the triggers. There are even preset profiles that you can select from for the triggers, and you can set them up individually. So the left trigger can have one profile, the right trigger can have another. It all depends on what you want to do with it. The customization is primarily done with the mode switch on the back, so if you switch into advanced mode, that is what allows you to make all those different changes when you're using the companion app. Of course, the lights can also be completely switched off if you just want a regular everyday controller. 
So that's how the color light stacks up. It's fine. It definitely gets the job done. It feels just like how it's priced, which I believe is about 40 or so dollars. On the other hand though, you have the big boy, the Revolution X, which like I said, it launched last year and this is just a different color scheme, but I honestly don't care for it. I'm really just interested in the controller itself. And what is the big difference between this and its more budget option? The Revolution X is a much bigger controller, much taller, whereas the color light was actually a smaller controller than the original Xbox One controller. This one isn't just bigger, but it's heavier too. And the thing about that is that that can be adjusted as well as just about almost everything else. Included in the box is not just a carrying case, but also an accessories kit, which features different caps for your joysticks, as well as different weights that you can put into the handles. The weights come in different volumes, so it completely depends on what your preference is. If you want to go light, you can go light, or you can go very heavy. Whichever feels best to you. Also are included what I call joystick spacers, but that's not really the name for it. Basically what they do is that they're different sizes and will give your joysticks different range of rotation. So basically there's a smaller one and a larger one, and depending on which one you have slotted onto your joystick, it'll allow you to push the stick only so far or you can take it out completely and give your joystick the ability to go free range. Of course, the controller comes out of the box without the spacers in, so you can go ahead and just leave it like that, although Nacon has provided them because some gamers prefer to have them and even will recommend which one to use depending on what type of game that you're playing. But someone like me, I don't really need them, but they are nice to have and it'll take some getting used to to see if I get really much use out of it. Of course, the other main event is at the back of the controller with these four extra buttons. Now, these four extra buttons are nice to have, and they would benefit me if I could really find a use for them. The thing is, because games are meant to be played on the standard controller for a system, the fact that you have these extra buttons are nice, but you have to find a use for them. So if you can't find a use for them, their inclusion here, although nice, is also a little bit interesting because these buttons are placed right behind your fingers on the handle so you have to remember that they're there otherwise you might press them accidentally now if you have nothing mapped to them that's fine but it does take some getting used to how you go about mapping them is that this controller actually has some onboard memory which allows it to switch between four profiles so you can set button mappings for each different profile as well as other settings and that's all handled by means of a companion app, which is not the same as the one for the color light. And the thing about that is that the app for the color light worked just fine, but for whatever reason, the app just refused to believe that this controller was connected to my PC. So editor's note here, this is AK from the future telling you that I did actually get that companion app to work after all for the Revolution X. And it turns out that all I had to do was restart my computer. Pro tip, if you ever have a problem with an electronic device, just restart it. Chances are, it might fix your problem. But just a basic rundown, once you create your own profile, which you can save four of to the controller, and the light ring will change color depending on which profile it is, you can select between the four ones that are already included with the controller. But in order to change any of the parameters, you actually have to make your own. So I went ahead, I did that. When you hop in here, you can see that you could adjust so many things. Um, you could change the button mapping. You can select the response curves for the left and right sticks, the analog sticks at the front. Um, the triggers, you can select the sensitivity either between presets or custom values. There's an equalizer if you choose to connect a headset to the controller, which I have not tested on PC, by the way, but that's more dedicated for the Xbox gamers anyhow. Um, and in the advanced settings, you can select the vibration levels for the hand grips as well as the vibration levels of the triggers although with the hand grips you can select between 0 to 100 whereas on the triggers you can select between low medium high as to exactly the intensity of the vibration um and you may have noticed you can even select a custom uh, color scheme for the light ring and so what i did was i just made it the same colors as the abxy buttons which i thought was pretty cool there are even three light cycling modes and three speeds to go with that the d-pad can be adjusted between eight-way and four-way modes i keep it a four-way because this d-pad is not the best <laughs> and you could also invert the left and right sticks so yeah the app does work so sorry back to the video <laughs> Just know that in regular mode, 
you are able to set, I believe, one, pro one profile. You just hold down the profile button, the ring the ring light that you see here will begin to fade and then you can put in input your settings that way. Or if you're in advanced mode, you can then use the app and then set up those four specific profiles. That said though, actually using the controller, it does feel nice. The buttons have a similar somewhat mushiness to them, just like on the color light. In fact, they basically seem to be the same buttons. And the D-pad is unfortunately also just as sad. It doesn't feel as great as the original Xbox One controller. Moving on to the shoulder buttons then, they also aren't as satisfying as what's on the Xbox One controller, although they are just a little bit better here than they are on the color light. The triggers though, haha, <laughs> they again are wider, they are more comfortable, but again it's that travel issue. They still have that same level of shallowness that I do not prefer compared to the Xbox One controller. I think Microsoft really nailed that design on the Xbox One controller because this, it just doesn't give me the same range. It'll take some getting used to. I'm sure if I, you know, practice with it for several hours, I would get used to the difference, but I, right off the bat, I prefer what's on the original Xbox One controller when it comes to those triggers. That said though, I do like the fact that these triggers do have vibration motors of their own. And this speaks for not just the Revolution Pro, but also the color light. So they have those trigger motors. Unfortunately, just like on the Xbox One controller, they only activate on a game to game basis. So some games will use them. Some games will completely ignore them and only use the rumble that's in the handlebars. Like for example, first party games, say Forza, Forza will use it. But if I play something like the Crew Motor Fest, not gonna feel that. I'm only gonna feel it in the handlebars. So to this day, I don't actually know if that's a PC thing or if it also is the same on the Xbox. If you game on an Xbox, let me know. Consider though, which controller should you get between these three? I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> what I mean by that is that these controllers do line up nicely as being different strokes for different folks. Because you have the budget option, you have the middle road option, and of course you have the more expensive premium option. And when you play them back to back, they really do feel exactly like how I just described them. Especially playing the color light right after using the Revolution X or vice versa. This one feels like a toy. The color light feels like a toy, just like how it kind of looks like one. Whereas the Revolution X feels like a more premium experience, just like how it, again, looks like one. But the thing about it is, if I were to say go over to a friend's house for some local co-op and he were to hand me this while he's using this, I'm not going to feel jilted that he handed me the cheaper controller because this actually does feel pretty good despite its lower price point and despite its lower level of quality. That said though, the standard Xbox One slash series controller still is going to suffice for most people. Microsoft hit it out of the gate with this design and it's interesting how they've ke virtually kept the same design ever since the Xbox S controller for the original Xbox, going into the 360 controller, going into the Xbox One era, and now with the Series controller, it, there's hardly much of a difference and it's been over 20 years. That just goes to show if it's not broke, don't fix it. But these aren't half bad. They're third-party controllers, but they're great third-party controllers and absolutely, if you have the money, I would say you could splurge on a pro controller like this, especially if you can personally find a use for these extra buttons. Having options is always nicer than not having them at all. That said though, if you're someone on a budget or perhaps looking for a controller for say a younger gamer, the color light is definitely the bee's knees. It feels good and it looks so cool. Either way, picking up this controller, even though it might be the budget option, is not going to provide you a lesser experience, especially considering the fact that it still retains customization features, even for the buttons and sticks. It is really cool that Nikon did that, despite this being a budget controller. So good on them for that. That said though, personally, 
I don't know which one's gonna become my new favorite. It might be the Revolution X, just because I love the way it feels. Like, I really do enjoy the way it feels. And I understand now what sets a Pro Controller apart from a standard one. Although, depending on who you ask, I'd still say the Xbox Elite Controller would be the better option if you're playing on PC or Xbox. But this, it's not so bad, and it does cost less than the Elite Controller, so I'm not surprised that it isn't as good as that. But for $99, it's nice. For slightly less, you can pick up an Xbox Series controller or an Xbox One controller. And of course, at the very back of the pack, but still very great, you have the color light. So regardless of which controller you pick up here, you're really not going to make a wrong choice. Nacon has hit it out of the park with both of these controllers. And although Microsoft's controller is the overall great option, any of these will suffice for you. Either way, I want to thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments which controller is the right one for you, and do you have any other recommendations from other third-party manufacturers? Let me know in the comments down below, and make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button to see more videos in the very near future. Until next time, thank you for watching, and thank you Nikon for sending out these review samples. It's been such a joy to try them out, and I'll be playing some more. So, until next time, see you in the next one.